My insane girlfriend drunkenly confessed to my friend that she is pregnant from her ex and plans to make me take care of the baby. He told me, and I broke up with her, so she went insane. One night at a party, my girlfriend Sophia had too much to drink, and she confessed a crazy secret to a friend of mine. She told him that she had been secretly hooking up with her ex behind my back and that she was pregnant by him. My friend said the second he found this out, he went to look for me to tell me. She also said that she planned to make me withdraw from college to help support her and the baby. I had just got my acceptance letter from my dream college, and hearing this was a kick to the gut. I felt heartbroken. I planned to do so much with this girl. We had been together since sophomore year, and I wanted to marry her after I graduated. Hearing this I almost couldn't believe it, but then I was reminded back to senior year. She often talked about how serious we were getting and how our parents loved us together, but Sophia said that she wanted to explore the world and try new things before she settled down with someone. She would often ask me if I felt like we were rushing into things too quickly, and I didn't think so because we were together for three years now. I never knew what she meant at the time. I told her that we could always travel together, but now, I could see she meant she wanted more experiences with other people. In senior year, we had an incident where I saw her phone as she was sitting next to me, and I saw she was texting Brendan, her ex-boyfriend. I asked her why she was texting him, and she replied that they dated back in freshman year, so she didn't think much of it. She described them as only having puppy love, but we got together sophomore year. I told her that I didn't feel comfortable with her texting him all the time because I feared that it would hurt our relationship, but she said that she'd been here for three years and that she wasn't going anywhere. I allowed her to continue talking to him, but a few months later, she started asking if they could hang out together. I really didn't feel comfortable with that, but I again allowed it because I was going away for college soon and knew that we'd have to trust each other. Fast forward to today, that is the same guy that got my girlfriend pregnant and she expected me to raise the child and take care of her. The next day, my head was still spinning. I was so in shock, hurt, and confused. I knew I had to confront Sophia. I couldn't just let this slide. I went to her parents' house. My heart was pounding in my chest. When she opened the door, she looked surprised to see me, but she looked a bit guilty. I guess she remembered what she said the night before. We sat on the couch, and I addressed what she said the night before. She immediately denied that she said that to my friend, and the reason she said it was because she thought it would be a funny joke while she was drunk. Neither of us found it funny. I told her to prove to me that it wasn't true, and pulled out a pregnancy test that I had bought from the store before I came. Her eyes widened, with shock when she recognized what I had. I told her if she couldn't take the test, then we couldn't work out. I knew in my heart that I still wanted to be with her, but I knew in my head that I couldn't be with her after she cheated on me with her ex. She lied to me, and wanted to put my dreams aside to support her. She tried to deny it and flip it on me. She asked me if I didn't trust her, and if I didn't, then we shouldn't be together. I told her that I was leaving, and we were done. She grabbed my arm to make me stay and confessed. She said she was a few weeks along and that it was an accident. They only did it one time, and she wanted me to be the father since I was a better person. She broke down into sobs and kept saying that she loved me and not him. She kept saying that it was just a mistake. I knew the answer before I came, but my heart was still broken to hear it come out of her mouth. I really believed that we had something that would last, something real. I left that day, but her calls and texts over the next few days didn't stop. It hurt having to watch her face light up on my phone screen and have to ignore it for my own sake. After she saw that I wouldn't respond to any of her calls and texts, she showed up at my parents' house. My mom answered the door, and she held her head down in shame. She asked for me, and I walked down the stairs to see her. I asked her what she wanted, and she said she just wanted to talk. I agreed, and told her after this talk, she'd have to promise to leave me alone. She agreed, and we went to my room. As soon as she sat on the bed, she burst into tears again, saying she felt scared and alone and begged for me back. I told her that I just wanted one thing from her. She asked me what it was, and I asked her for a paternity test on the baby, because if it did indeed come back as mine, I'd be willing to take care of the child. However, I would still not be with her. She piped up, asking me why that was the case. I was in utter disbelief. I had to explain to her that the reason I wasn't going to be with her regardless if the baby was mine or not was because she cheated on me with her ex-boyfriend. But it was only one time, she said. Yeah, that one time was my black swan event. Like it or not, I can never see you the same way again. Before I left her, I wanted to make sure she wasn't carrying my child, because my dad always taught me that no child deserves to be raised without a father. I think she was under the assumption that I would take her back if she did the test, because at that moment, she dried her tears and began smiling, saying she would do it tomorrow morning. I explicitly told her that that didn't mean that we were back together, but her delusions got the best of her. She was convinced that since I allowed her to talk to me, we were back together. I honestly have no idea how she even managed to extrapolate that from what I had told her. But nonetheless, the next day she took the test, and the doctors sent it off. They told us that it would be a few weeks before they would get the results, and in the meantime, she tried to hang out with me and would often call my phone about things that didn't pertain to the baby. I told her that I would care for her until I knew the results, and she took it a few steps too far. She would often show up at my house unannounced, and even tried to get intimate with me.
I constantly reminded her that we were not together and that she should only call me if she needed something for the baby. She said that the baby could feel her sadness and would use that as an excuse to hang out with me or have me buy her food. Those weeks were agonizing and took a toll on my mind. I tried to be there for Sophia, all while mourning the relationship we once had. Every time I'd speak to her, I was reminded of her voice or of the future that I was supposed to have with her. If you've tried to get over someone while having to see them every single day, you would understand. After the tormenting weeks passed, the results were in. The baby wasn't mine, and Sophia broke down again. She cried, saying that I'd been an amazing partner even though we weren't together, and begged that I take on the role of the father in the child's life. I said to talk to Brendan since he was supposedly the dad. She admitted that he told her that he was too young to take care of the kid and wanted her to terminate the pregnancy. He said that if she carried this child for the full term, he would make her a single mother, but she didn't listen because she assumed I would take care of the baby. I said that that wasn't my responsibility anymore, and I had my answer, but it did hurt deep down that that child would grow up without a dad. It still felt bittersweet to know that I wouldn't be stuck with a manipulator and forced to co-parent with her. The following months, I was a mental wreck. My friends helped me heal and checked in regularly to make sure I was doing okay. Sophia, however, went crazy. When she realized that I was actually done with her, she would stalk my social media accounts to make sure I wasn't with someone else. She was the first to view my stories and would often view my profile every day. When that wasn't enough, she started contacting my mom. My dad was the one who ended up calling me and asking if I was neglecting a child that was mine. He said Sophia showed up to their house, saying that I knocked her up and dipped without wanting to take care of her son. Sophia was showing a lot by this point. She was a little bit over six months now, and they recently had a gender reveal for the boy she was carrying. I told him that she was lying and delusional. I didn't have the paternity test to prove it anymore, but I told him that I knew the values that he instilled in me, and I would have raised that baby if it was mine. I told him to let mom know that she was lying on my name and that she cheated on me with her ex-boyfriend Brendan. My dad apologized for accusing me without talking to me first and said he should have known to trust me. I forgave him and got off the phone. I got home from work and shuffled through the drawer in my room to find the paternity test. When I got home, my mom still didn't believe me and wanted to see the paternity test herself. And the second her eyes started racing across that piece of paper, I saw her rage instantly turn to sadness. She apologized for not believing me earlier and said that Sophia made it seem so believable. She said Sophia cried in her arms about wanting me to take care of the child we made together. With my mom on my side, Sophia lost her last ally. She became very depressed because Brendan wanted nothing to do with the baby either. She tried everything to win me back, from sending me gifts, to showing up unannounced at my house and job, begging for another chance, but I never gave her the reaction she wanted. Then one night, my phone rang. It was Sophia. Her voice was hysterical. She was crying, and her voice began cracking. She started saying how she couldn't live without me, and that she didn't want to live without me. I told her that she needed to go see a therapist. She begged me again to be with her, and I told her the same thing I'd been telling her. She then said she'd take her life and the babies if I wouldn't be with her again. I was in a panicked state. Despite everything, I didn't want her to hurt herself. I told her to stay on the phone with me and talk to her. I called the police from my home phone while my phone was muted. I stayed on the line until I heard the police come in. They arrived just in time to prevent her from harming herself. They took her to a mental hospital for treatment. That night was a turning point. The whole ordeal made me realize just how toxic and manipulative Sophia had been. With Sophia out of my life and receiving the help she needed, I focused on rebuilding my own life. I went through a range of emotions, from relief to anger to sadness. It wasn't easy, but with Lucas's support and my family, I found the strength to move on. Soon enough, it was time for me to go to college. Months passed, and gradually, life started to regain a sense of normalcy. I made new friends, joined clubs, and even started dating again, though I was more cautious this time. Sophia remained in the back of my mind, but as a distant memory. One evening, as I was studying for midterms, my phone buzzed with a text from my friend who told me about the whole ordeal in the first place. He said that he wanted to grab something to eat together while I was home for the weekend. He said he had something to celebrate. I didn't know what he wanted to celebrate, but I agreed since I hadn't seen him since I left for college. At the restaurant, he grinned as he slid an envelope across the table and told me to open it. It was a letter from all of my friends back home telling me how much they loved and missed me and how they were proud of me for getting into my dream college. This really touched my heart. It felt good to have this type of support system beside me throughout everything. As I sat there, surrounded by friends and feeling hopeful about the future, I realized that I had come out stronger on the other side. Sophia's betrayal had nearly broken me, but it had also created a new beginning for me. I had learned to value the people who truly cared for me and to never let anyone else define my worth. 